Hey everybody, this is Corbett Barr from Think Traffic, and I am sitting down today with uh, Josh and Ryan from TheMinimalist.com. How are you guys doing today? Doing great. Outstanding. Thanks. Sorry, Josh. Do you mind if I call you Josh, or do you go by Joshua? I would say you can call me whatever you want. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, Corbett. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So um, the reason I wanted to have these guys on today is um, partly because of the stunning success they've had with their blog over the past nine months in um, a topic that I think a lot of people maybe thought was already sort of saturated um, at about the time you guys created your blog. If you think back to 2010, I guess, uh, late 2010, if you think about the concept of minimalism, people had already been writing about it for um, a while, for at least a couple of years. Uh, Leo Babauta is one of the first, I think, to have written about it at Zen Habits. And he had been writing about it probably for longer than a couple of years. And uh, in 2010, there was sort of a, um, what I thought was maybe a saturation point because so many people had been talking about it. And the question was, well, how much can you talk about living with fewer things, right? Because it's a, it seems like a rather narrow topic. But then you guys came along and you started a blog. And 10 months later, you've got some really impressive numbers that we'll talk about in a second. But um, let's start by just explaining why did you think you should start a blog about minimalism and, and where did you think it could go? Sure. I'll, I'll let Ryan sort of tell our history, I guess. Yeah, I mean, really, you know, we're just going to throw each other for the last 20 years and, uh, you know, have, have done different different ventures, I guess. But, uh, you know, we come from the corporate world where uh, we managed, you know, lots of people and we we kind of come to this point in our life where, we really want to live more meaningful lives, and and uh, that's what's most important to us. Yeah, I think uh, we a couple of years ago, my mom died in, in two thousand nine, and uh, it kind of made me start questioning a lot of things that were going on in my life, and I had no idea what minimalism was or any of this other stuff. But when that happened, Ryan and I kind of got together. We've known each other for a long time, and. The, the topic of happiness came up for us a lot and we decided, you know, we've got all these like things that society tells us we're supposed to have that is going to make us happy. You know, we have these six figure jobs, we have all these luxury items, but we weren't happy. And so we sort of inadvertently stumbled across minimalism and saw these people who were living passionate lives. You mentioned Leo, uh, Colin Wright was another guy that we stumbled across pretty early and we never really read blogs before, but somehow stumbled across a couple of people that we noticed living more meaningful lives and said, wow, maybe that's something that, that we can do. It was, not, it was never about starting a website online so we could make a bunch of money. We just wanted to start The Minimalist to, to document our journey and then also hopefully help some other people out. You know, Coming from the corporate world, we have been able to coach and mentor a lot of people. So we thought you know, we, we could probably do that in a greater capacity as well. Uh, online, so we thought, hey, this would be a great a great way for us to really help a lot of people out. And when uh, when did you first stumble on minimalism? When did you start um, trying to practice it yourselves? And and when did you start the blog? Yeah, uh, uh, I think it was late two thousand nine when we started uh, talking about it. You know, just yeah, just just we sort of uncovered it and then started practicing. I would say throughout most of two thousand ten. It, not even fully embracing it at first, just trying different things, you know, living without cable TV, doing doing some basic stuff. It was never really about counting items or getting rid of stuff for us. It was getting rid of the clutter so we could, I guess, find a more meaningful life. It, we, knew it, we knew it was out there and we saw people living it. We just weren't, we didn't feel it. Yeah, I really didn't come across it um, until Josh introduced me to it, really. And it, it kind of started with um, my diet. I I was vegan for seven, eight, ten months, something along those lines. And um, it was, you know, just self-discipline made me feel good about uh, how I, you know, lived and made me healthier. Um, and then somewhere along those lines, Josh showed me what, you know, minimalism and, and kind of introduced me to, to those guys that you guys, you had mentioned earlier, Leo and uh, uh, Colin, right? But that's, but that's how it came through me is uh, Josh introduced me to it. And then uh, what, what drove you to create the blog? Why did you decide to sort of take your experiments online? Yeah, you know, it, it was interesting. I, I've, I've written for a long time, primarily fiction, but I think we've both pretty much been ignorant to the whole nonfiction genre. 
honestly, a couple of years ago, I didn't really know what a blog was. I thought it, that was sort of where grandmas catalog pictures of their pets, right? <laughs> so uh, when we stumbled across some, some really useful information that was fairly succinct, we said, wow, th- th- this is really helpful for us. Maybe we can contribute back to other people. And, and, and ultimately, that was it. We wanted to find a way that we could use what we're doing and, 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 and provide that content to, uh, uh, to people. So to kind of articulate a little bit more on what Josh said or ex- expand upon it, you know, when we were in our corporate jobs, like I said earlier, we managed large groups of people, and we really enjoyed that this, this was the best part of our job was the interaction with the people. And the blog was this perfect road or this perfect avenue to a large group of people uh, that didn't have to look at us like we were these corporate figures. So we could just help them to help them, and, you know, not, not in, without a corporate setting pretty much. It's, it's always weird <clears throat> managing people in corporate. I know you're very familiar intimately with the corporate world, um, having left it yourself. Uh, you know, it's interesting because managing a large group of people, a lot of them are really bought into you, but some of them are, they're also forced to, to work for you. Here it's a little bit different, right? You know, anyone who comes to our site, it's completely voluntary. And, uh, in fact, whenever we ask people to subscribe to our site, we also ask people to unsubscribe when they stop finding value. If, if you don't find value in what we're doing, we don't expect you to stick around. If you do find value, great. Share it with your friends, family, whatever. But, but really only if you're finding value in, in, in whatever we're providing. Yeah, and um, speaking of value, you guys have taken, taken on a, a different approach, I think, to creating content um, than a lot of people online. I know that you uh, tend to refer to your blog posts more as essays than blog posts. Tell me about that. Why did you decide to go with such a long form, and, and um, why do you consider them essays? Sure, sure. I, you know, I, I don't know if there's an appreciable difference between an essay or a blog post. Um, f- for us, it's something we were at least familiar with. Like I said, we were pretty ignorant to the whole um, nonfiction genre. But uh, we were fairly, uh, I guess, ver- well-versed in writing essays. You know, we've both been through a number of college courses and, and knew how to write certain things. So it's sort of do what you know, right? And because we didn't have a lot of experience with blogging or even fully understanding blogs, we decided, you know what, let's, let's kind of do what we know, but let's also find a way to make our content meaningful. So sometimes some of the stuff we write is, is fairly long. Uh, people tend to stay on our site a lot longer because of that. But in doing so, we also have to go through a whole lot of drafts. So we spend a lot of time going through all of the content on our site. Anything you see on our site, we typically post one or two things a week occasionally three things a week, but a lot of time goes into it, weeks and weeks sometimes, before we, we have to go back and edit things. Uh, so if, if there was one difference, I would say we spend a lot more time going through revisions and drafts of things on our site. Hmm. That's good. You, uh, you mentioned that people tend to spend a lot of time on your site. I just want to um, unveil, uh, uh, reveal some stats, if you don't mind. Um, and these are public, I guess, because you've written about them recently. Um, you hit a milestone last month. Your blog was about nine months old. And um, tell us about how many people you attracted to the site. Sure. Um, well, some of the stats, and uh, I'd actually have to look at them. Do you have them in front of you? I, I, I Honestly, I'm sorry. We, we, we tend to look at the stats in the rear view, but they've, they've never been a big focus for us. Well, here's, yeah. here's, what, I, here's what I read. Tell me, if, tell me if this doesn't sound correct. Okay. Okay. Um, so it sounds like uh, last month you had attracted 100,000 unique visitors in one month, essentially, and that was at the nine-month mark. And um, perhaps more interesting than that is the fact that um, people are spending a lot of time on your site. Um, when we talk about traffic and metrics and, and um, the average time that someone spends on a site in a given visit, a lot of times you're talking about something in the two-minute range um, I think that's pretty typical. Getting up to maybe three minutes average per visitor on your site is um, pretty commendable. Four minutes is really high and almost unheard of. You guys are at six minutes per visit that people are spending on your site. Um, do you have any ideas why that might be? Why are people spending so much time reading your content when they come I, to your site? I think it's because I'm really digressive and I just write a bunch of words and just wander <laughs> on. <laughs> 
<laughs> I would agree with that. Uh, you, you know, <laughs> it, it's interesting, and, and Ryan and I have talked a lot about this. In fact, I think we, we you, you said it best, Corey, but you, you said it far more eloquently than I could. I, the 100,000 readers is great, but that doesn't mean much to me if they're all coming there for 30 seconds, right? I mean, that doesn't mean I'm really not making an impact on anyone's life if they read you know, 15 words in, in 15 seconds and leave the site. What was more important is that we have you know, people that, I think it was 11,000 hours uh, last month that they spent on the site. So uh, to me, that means people, they come, they stay, they're reading the content, they're clicking through to a bunch of different pages. And, and I, I think the reason that that is is because the content we put out, out there, we work really hard on. And uh, Yeah, no, that's... I, I, I would agree with Josh a hundred percent. I mean, we put so much thought and effort into our content. Um, like Josh had said, we put, you know, draft after draft. We have, um, a lot of close friends and, and some acquaintances who help us with our essays before we, you know, post them and the readers can see that. And that's, that's exactly why they stick around. Ryan, do you know how long your average blog post is in terms of number of words? <laughs> Uh, it can range. Our average is probably what, five, six hundred words. You no, know, they're probably longer. I mean, they, I say I'll tell you they, they vary pretty drastically. I mean, there are some on our site that are four thousand words. There are some that are, I don't know, six, seven hundred words, maybe. Yeah, it's so somewhere in between there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Well, that definitely makes a difference, I guess. Sometimes longer posts. You know, if people are really into what you're writing and you're writing longer posts, then uh, naturally they're going to be on your site more. But, um, you know, on the other hand, sometimes people can skim over what you're reading. And, you know, if you think about the average being six minutes, that means, um, you know, of those people, a lot of people are spending just 30 seconds, like you said, but that means other people are spending, you know, 10, 12, 15 minutes probably hanging out on your site, which is a big chunk of someone's day. So, um, so congrats on that. So, so to get to 100,000 readers and, and like you said, maybe more impressively to the point where people are spending 11,000 hours Per month on your site in nine months is is incredible growth. Um, I wanted to ask, do you have any particular promotion strategies? Are there ways, are there things that you have done to get the word out over over the past ten months, and um, has that changed over time? You know, we we really haven't um, had any particular one strategy that we've that we've done to get readers. It's nothing. No hype, no um, nothing that wasn't authentic. You know, I mean, we go out, we meet people. We uh, we've met you a couple times. You know, you live a couple thousand miles away from us. Um, we uh, we just put authentic material on our side, and and I think you know mostly it travels word of mouth. In fact, I can't think of one book we've read or the only website we've been to 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 even look at how to increase our traffic was your site, honestly, was <laughs> the only one we ever really looked at. But, you know, as far as strategy and getting readers and, and growing that number to 100,000, uh, we really don't have one, honestly. Yeah, and I don't think we, we ever really defined success by that either. You know, it, if, if you look at what makes someone successful, I, I don't think it's how many readers you have or, or how many subscribers you have or, or whatever. I, I think it's, it has a lot more to do with, with two things. Number one, are, are you happy with what you're doing, with the content you're putting out, whatever? And are you constantly improving? Is that content getting better as, as, uh, as time goes on? And, and I, I feel like that's why we're successful, not because we have a large number of readers. It, it just feels, it feels a lot more like uh, uh, we're successful because we're really happy with, with what we're doing right now. We're happy that we're making a difference with other people, and it, it's constantly improving. So aside from the, um, the sort of intangibles, like creating quality content and, and, um, and helping your readers, did you have any specific goals for the blog when you created it? Did you want to create a business out of the blog? Did you have other things in mind for the blog? Yeah. You know, I don't think we ever initially wanted to create a business out of it. We have at this point. But uh, really, we had, I wouldn't say we had any, any specific goals. We had, we had a vision of what we wanted this thing to be. We wanted, we knew how we wanted to look. And honestly, I think that's another thing that, that has really helped us out is the simplicity of the site. We knew nothing about building a website. The, the, the two of us could hardly spell HTML when we, a year ago. We have no idea how to, 
uh, how, how to build a site from, from scratch. So we figured that out. Um, it's intentionally simple, but it's also simple because we don't really understand how to build a complex site. Um, and, and so that also allowed us to, to focus on, on keeping it as simple as possible. Um, which I think I think a lot of our readers really appreciate. You know, they don't want to see a billion pop-ups or, or all this extra stuff on the side that is sort of superfluous and, and, and doesn't add value to the to the stuff that's there. Um, so yeah, I would say we had a vision. Uh, we, we we networked with a lot of people. You know, established much deeper connections in person with people. I mean, we've met you a couple times. We've met Leo and Colin and Everett and all these other names that I'm sure you. Uh, that your readers and viewers here are, are very familiar with. And we don't live close to anyone. We live in Dayton, Ohio. So, um, you know, we've gone to conferences, we, we've taken trips, you know, we, we've done different things to, to meet with different people and gotten a lot of really good uh, uh, feedback from them and, and hopefully been able to add value to what they're doing as well. Uh, we always focus on adding value to what someone else is doing first before we ask for anything. Yeah. I was going to say, sorry, uh, money is, uh, it's not something that we focus on with our site at all. I mean, it's not, <clears throat> if you go, you know, if you go to our website and you think these guys are trying to sell me something, then you're not going to want to stick around our website. And, uh, you know, that's not something that is important to us. And we haven't, you know, we haven't uh, really pimped out the site, so to speak. We don't have any advertising on there. Um, we just you know, we just do what we can in the most authentic way possible. I want to um, ask you about the business side of things in just just a second. But um, before we do that, you mentioned a second ago a name that I wanted to, I hope you don't mind me asking about, but you mentioned Everett Bogue briefly. Um, I know that um, I, I'm trying to remember when what the time frame was exactly, but some short time after you guys launched your blog, I think there was a little bit of a shakeup in the in the world of minimalism, if you will, <laughs> in, that, um, in that Everett decided basically to shut down his very popular blog about minimalism far beyond the stars, and uh, subsequently he sort of started over. Um, and uh, he had his own personal reasons for doing that. But I wanted just to sort of ask you about being there to kind of pick up the pieces. Um, did you get any sort of benefits from being around and being a place where people could go who were still interested in the topic maybe, but felt like, you know, they were kind of left in the lurch? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I, I met Everett, um, last year. Or, wow. Uh, yeah, ago. no, it was 2010, summer of 2010. I was out in San Francisco. Um, I had no, I, I was just a reader at that point in time. I had read his site. I had read Leo's site and a few others. And uh, I've been writing f fiction for several years, and um, I really appreciated what he was doing with his life. So when I was out in San Francisco, I just sent him, I think, a message on Twitter and said, hey, you want to meet up for coffee or whatever? And we met, and we ended up spending the day together and just talking about what he's doing and, and what I'm trying to do with the fiction. And he kind of encouraged uh, me to, to do some stuff online. Um, and I, I took those words back to Ohio and just sort of let it simmer for a while. I talked to Ryan about it. And that was sort of the impetus of, of starting the site. Um, but did we get traffic from it? Uh, yeah, I think, I think it, was, it was an interesting sort of thing that, that unfolded. It, it, that was back in January, so it was a while ago. And it was honestly, it was about five or six weeks into our uh, st since we started the site. And yeah, a lot of people did come from that. Um, it, it certainly wasn't. It wasn't the majority of our traffic, but yeah, I would assume that that, that did help us out, um, as did a lot of other people through their contributions of whether they're sending tweets for us or you know linking to us, uh, things like that. A lot of things have, have really contributed to yeah. our growth. Yeah, and it's all about um, being in the right place at the right time and, and um, doing a lot of putting the hard work in to have something that's worthwhile for people to um, connect with. So that you can take advantage of certain opportunities, which is which is great that you guys have been able to do that. Um, let's let's get back, if you don't mind, to the business aspects. Um, I think you have something to announce, or that you will be announcing shortly. If you wouldn't mind, uh, maybe just sharing that, Joshua. I know you uh, actually left your day job, your corporate job, six figure job, um, some time ago. Tell us about that, and then Ryan, tell us what what's uh, cooking on your side as well. Yeah, great. I, I uh, in February left left my job, um, primarily to just pr pursue my passions, and that's writing for me. Um, 
primarily writing fiction. So that's what I spend a lot of my time doing. But like I said, we just sort of stumbled across the minimalism thing and it's gone exceptionally well for us. But uh, for me, I've always wanted to write fiction. And so I had an opportunity to, uh, to, to leave and, uh, and, and spend some time just doing that. Uh, thankfully, we're making uh, enough money off the site now where I don't have to uh, have to go back and, and work a corporate job. But uh, uh, I guess that would lead me to Ryan's big news. <clears throat> so that said, <laughs> um, I actually left my job a couple weeks ago. Was it um, two weeks ago today? Yeah. Yeah, it was two weeks ago today. Congrats. Wow. Congrats on that. Thank you very much. I... I really look forward to you know spending more time on the site, spending more time with our readers, especially um, just you know having those more uh, intimate conversations and be able to, to focus more on on people. But you know this thing grew faster than we ever could have dreamed, and it's at the point now where I got you know I, I get to uh, leave my corporate job and and, and work on the site and, and, and focus mainly on that. So. That's the big news. That's awesome. Congrats. I think that's, uh, that's a big dream for a lot of people, and to have been able to achieve that within uh, 10 months or less is commendable, especially considering that there are two of you working on the project at the same time. So, um, so uh, along those lines, what are your revenue sources? How are you guys actually bringing in cash to support both of you at this point? Yeah, um, a couple things. I mean, the one that has uh, one thing we've made money on um, for the longest time is is affiliate sales, but it was never a, a big revenue stream for us. You know, you, you see all these affiliate links and affiliate this, affiliate that, and while we do make an appreciable amount of money on, from it now, um, for the longest time, you know, it was uh, we weren't we weren't too focused on it, but also we didn't have enough traffic to to really generate a ton of affiliate sales. Um, but, uh, that said, we just, we released our, uh, our first book recently and it, it climbed to number six on Amazon and it's, uh, in its category, it's nonfiction category. And the top five were like really big published authors. So that went way, way, way better than we ever anticipated. Awesome. So yeah, that's, that's sort of our first thing. And we've got some other projects we're working on now that will sort of be follow ups to that. Uh, but that, those are our, our primary revenue streams uh, at this point. Cool, cool, good. Well, it's it's sometimes it's nice to keep things simple. Um, it lets you focus <laughs> more on more on what really matters. Um, so uh, I wanted to sort of get your take on um, beginning bloggers, and you know, there's a lot of people watching this who um, maybe have started a blog and it hasn't gone that well, or maybe they're thinking about restarting their blog, and maybe they just haven't quite figured out. Um, how to make it popular. If we could just sort of, if you could share your advice, if you were to sit down and look at someone who was trying to make a popular blog and they were struggling with it, what would you advise them to look at and to focus on? Um, if, if you're asking me, it would be content. Uh, that is, I think, what separates us from a lot of other blogs out there. It's the quality of the content. It's just as simply as I can say yeah. it, really. And, and I think you said something earlier that, that resonates with me is, is the authenticity of it. Yeah. <clears throat> if you're writing about something that you're doing, you kind of got to make sure that you're doing it as well. I think people will see through it otherwise. Uh, it, it, but uh, the other thing that I think was really big for us is we had a vision of what we wanted this thing to look like. And I know we talked about that earlier, but you need to know wh who you're trying to write for and then what you want your stuff to look like. Um, that, that was incredibly important for us. And, and the biggest thing I would tell people is if you're focused on money first, y your content is going to seem, uh, it's not going to seem authentic to people, I don't think. I mean, it's okay to make money. I'm not, we're minimalist. It doesn't mean we're allergic to money. Um, you know, but, but at the same time, it, it shouldn't be the primary focus of, of what you're doing either. Yeah. Um, do you guys think that uh, you have to be a gifted writer in order to create a successful blog? No, I, I don't. Um, I, um, <laughs> again, I think we were both really ignorant to the whole writing nonfiction genre. So I, I wouldn't think, I don't think either one of us are incredible uh, writers uh, by, by any stretch. Um, 
I can write fiction at least somewhat competently, but but when it comes to comes to this stuff, it was it, it was starting from scratch. So I really think that anyone, as long as they're willing to put in the effort, can can, can do uh, uh, an exceptional job with it. It's just it has to. It really has to be not. You can't half-ass the project. You, you have to be able to get it, get out there and, and, and really, really work on, on your craft and constantly improve it. So what's next for you guys and, and for The Minimalists? Well, we've got Josh's uh, fiction, um, Falling While Sitting Down, coming out at the end of this month. Awesome. And, then we, and then we've got our uh, second book. Um, coming out uh, at the end of next month, which uh, we're really excited about. Yeah, I think I think for us, the the other piece is, you know, those are the two big projects we're working on. But what's next is we're going to continue to grow as individuals and, and and continue to contribute to people in meaningful ways. That, that's really what what we're here to do, irrespective of whether we have a hundred readers or you know a million readers. We're going to continue to. to do our best to contribute to those people. Well, thanks guys for coming on. I, I really appreciate the, uh, the authenticity and, and willingness to share all of the details. And, um, it's clear that, uh, you guys care. And I think that's something that, uh, a lot of sites could use a little bit more of, which is just caring about the people that they're interacting with. So, um, so thanks so much, everybody. Uh, if you want to check out more from Joshua and Ryan, you can check out their site, theminimalist.com. And uh, you guys are also on Twitter as well, right? Yeah, we're, we're both separately on Twitter. Just go to our site. You can find all the stuff there. We're on Facebook and Google Plus. And, and I think we're on MySpace. LinkedIn. <laughs> Anything we leave out there? You're uh, on Friendster. <laughs> yeah, Friendster. MySpace. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Good. Well, thanks, guys. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. And, and have a great one. Thanks, all right. Thanks. See you.